right, Stephen Allwine. Gentleman lives in Minnesota. He was an elder in his church, but he found the website Ashley Madison. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's a website where married folks can arrange dates. So, and not with their spouse. So, Mr. Allwine had decided that was a good idea. He had done this a few times, and he decided, all right, I'm done being married. Didn't want to be married anymore. So, reasonable person might say, okay, divorce. Not Mr. Allwine. He decided, I'm going to have my wife killed. So, how do we do that? He does a little research, goes out to the dark web, and he finds a contract killer. $5,000 later, he's got his contract done. He thinks, all right. Well, the day comes and goes that his wife's supposed to be dead. She's not. So Mr. Allwine goes back to the contract killer to complain. Maybe not smart, but that's what he did. (laughs) Believe it or not, the contract killer was uh, sympathetic to his cause. Because for that $5,000 price, he had uh, hired the B team, right? Not not the best that we had. But luckily for him, the A team was available. It's only $20,000 for them. They're going to do the right thing, credit the 5000 that he's already spent, uh, given them, so he only needs to give them another fifteen, and they'll set up a new, new contract right with the A-team. We'll get it done. So he agrees. He has a condition. It's got to be done by next Sunday. So contract killer says, okay, fair enough. Sunday comes and goes. His wife is still alive. So Mr. Allwine, I guess figuring that, hey, okay, I've been duped. I'm out twenty grand, but I still don't want to be married. So he decides to kill his wife, stages a suicide. He goes and picks up his eight-year-old adopted son, says, son, we're going to go get mom and go to dinner. Has this son go inside to get mom and find mom dead, supposed suicide. Yeah, not a nice guy. So why do I start with this story? Because I mentioned the dark web, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. Maybe you know what it is, maybe you don't, maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't, but we're going to talk about how it's used and how it gets abused. So the dark web started out actually as a research project uh, by the U.S. Navy. They wanted to have a means that they could use the internet, right, to communicate, but they wanted to do it, uh, you know, quietly where they, uh, no one would know, uh, be anonymous. So they start this project and this technology comes out that, uh, hey, we can do that. We can be anonymous. For fellow Trekkies, right, they build a Romulan cloaking device. So, unfortunately, though, like what Captain Kirk did, right, that Romulan cloaking device gets away, and it gets out to the private sector. The real world gets this technology, this tool, so, and we develop uh, what becomes the dark web. Um, you say, well, Derek, if it's just this little thing out there, why is it such a big deal? Well, I think we can agree Google's a monster, right? It's a big thing. And surely Google has reached the end of the internet with their vast resources. Well, that's not quite right. Depending on the source, I looked it up, um, it's between 5 and 14% of what's out on the internet that Google is able to index to give us access to when we do our searches. Regardless of the number, it's a very, very small part of what's out there. So how are we going to think about the dark web? Well, I I like to think about it. I'm from South Dakota, so it's Deadwood, South Dakota, circa 1860, right? It's the Wild West. There's no sheriff in town. You're not going to tell me what I can do. You're not going to tell me what I can't do. I'm going to buy. I'm going to sell, you know, anything I want. It's it's open season, and uh, that's kind of the case, right? We just heard Mr. Allwine. You can hire a contract killer. You can buy guns. You can buy drugs. You can buy credit cards. Uh, Human trafficking happens on the dark web. Uh, The Super Bowl was in Minneapolis. The firm that I work for uh, worked with the NFL and their anti-human trafficking uh, uh, group that they had going. That happens at big events because, unfortunately, that goes along with these big events. And over 90% of the cases that they were aware of, uh, the folks were using the dark web to set up their meetings. So so instead of just talking about it, I'm going to take us out. We're going to take a look at what the dark web is. All right, so right now what I've done, I loaded them ahead of time, but I'm on a browser here, so we're actually out looking on the dark web. I can click on stuff, and we can, and could go. So this is a UK passport. You say, okay, name of my choice. That might be beneficial. Thousand pounds, like, man, that's a lot of money 
for a counterfeit passport. Well, if you read a little bit closer, this is not a counterfeit passport. This is a legitimate passport that they supposedly have someone working on the inside that's going to get this entered into the UK database, into their government database. So somebody pulls it up, like, oh, yep, that person's good. You know, it says that you can travel in the UK and the EU on this particular website, but I can come to the United States on a British passport as well. So you say, so what? Well, a gentleman, another Minnesota businessman, uh, is traveling overseas, comes back through the Minneapolis airport, uh, customs, does a cursory search on his computer, and they find questionable images of young folks. So the airport police, they stop, they call our firm and say, hey, can you do the forensics on this, right, on this uh, computer for these images? And we say, sure. So we get it in, start doing the exam for the uh, images, and we find additional criminal activity. So we stop. You go back to the airport police, say, hey, we found what, you, what we're looking for. You know, good job. You guys have heard. Um, but we found some additional information here that we need uh, another warrant for so that we can continue. And what this gentleman had done, he was a prominent businessman. He was wealthy. He, too, decided he no longer wanted to be married, but he didn't want to give his wife half his stuff. So he goes to this exact website, gets a U.K. passport in the name of his choice, and he goes back overseas, uh, hires a firm to set up a trust. He starts selling off his family assets, puts them into accounts that this trust controls in this name of his choice, and uh, comes back to the United States, right? Now he's got nothing, half of nothing is nothing. So he figures, hey, I can go on, live my life, but still have all my money. Luckily, though, due to this case, um, gentleman is not. He's now a guest of the state of Minnesota for the next 12 years. Now, this is an interesting this one, this next one. And you're going to say, Derek, it's broken. And that's kind of the point. I'll, talk, I'll, I'll switch back over here in just a second. But this website, just yesterday, when I was going through this, was up and running. And it is this website. Um, we hear about counterfeit credit cards, right, being, able, being sold on the uh, dark web. So this is an example of that. But also, right, the Wild West things come and go. So just overnight, for whatever reason, whether some law enforcement agency got this guy or something happened, but his, web, his website is now gone. That's a good thing. But uh, the interesting thing I like to, wanted to point out here is, sure, we have credit cards, but if you look at that second option, it says PayPal. What the heck does that mean? Well, this guy will send a compromised PayPal account. You give him, it's like 10 cents on the dollar, so you give him $350, and he claims that he's going to give you access to a PayPal account that now has $3,500 in it. Boom, you can suck all the money out and go on about your business. That's a pretty good business plan. The other one there, Western Union, I thought was interesting as well. He claims that he can intercept a transfer. So I assume he's got someone working inside Western Union, right? He can intercept that wire transfer and have it sent to you instead. And again, he charges about $0.10 cents on the dollar for that. But again, Wild West, it's not there. You can see, there's a website. I was trying to go to the address. I said guns, right? Guns on the dark web. This guy, he's got several he'll sell you. All right, come on down through here. The nice thing about this guy, you know, you, you know what you're getting. His guns are new and unused. So drugs, that's a big one on the dark web. <clears throat> this is one of our favorites. This guy's selling psychedelics. Um, but again, he's a businessman, right? So he wants to try to ensure you that uh, what you're getting is good. So he, he makes sure that his products are rigorous, rigorously tested. I don't know if you can see that right here. All products are tested by ourself. <laughs> Remember, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. These folks, it's more drugs, different types. If you can kind of ignore or look past the heroin and the cocaine and all that, Look at the top, it's the People's Drug Store. And what are they doing? They're gonna pride themselves in offering the best quality products, competitive prices, making every effort to go above and beyond when it comes to customer satisfaction, right? You could find that probably on Amazon, right? Some small marketplace, that's their goal. Maybe Walmart, right? That's their goal as well. So these folks, you know, it's a business. And if you weren't, you know, if you didn't have a warm fuzzy yet, they're also trying to pass on savings. If you look here in the middle, it says the heroin they offer comes direct from the importer. They're going to cut out the middleman. Again, pass that savings on to you. If you still weren't convinced, they're going to try to educate us. What is the difference between number three and number four heroin? 
It says most people know that already. I did not, I'll admit. <laughs> but they're going to educate us. And then just as an example, here's right at the bottom, here's the e-commerce part of their webpage. You can get what you want. Now, spell checker apparently is not a drug dealer's. You can get a quatergram. All right, so this guy, he, uh, or, or gal, they advertise that it's a pres prescription-free drug store. Sounds great, right? Well, believe it or not, we actually had uh, an attendee of an event ask us one time, isn't that legitimate? I have a prescription. Yeah, th yeah the answer is no, it's not. <laughs> but this person, it was, it was really interesting. What they asked was, is I have a prescription for my medication, over the years, I can't afford it anymore. It's too expensive, right? Whether the drug goes up, whether my insurance goes up, whatever the reason might be, it's too expensive. But I need it, right? Whether I'm in pain or whatever it might be. So these guys, I can afford it on one of these sites. I have a prescription for it. You know, my doctor, it's being... So doesn't that make it legitimate? Again, the answer is no. But let me give you a little bit of example why you may not want to do that. So let's say a few years ago, you had a surgery hip replacement, knee replacement, something big. Uh, there were some complications in that surgery, and uh, you were in pain. So the doctor, years ago, right, prescribes pain meds. Uh, let's say Vicodin. So you've got your Vicodin. You have to take four at a time. I mean, you're in a lot of pain. So you do this after many years. So, right, we get to today, and uh, opioid, there's a problem with that, right? Prescription abuse, we're concerned with that. So your doctor says, hey, let's review this. I think we need to try to wean you off of all that Vicodin. So your doctor starts to do that. You know, instead of four pills, no, three, two. And, you know, you don't feel well. You're still in pain. So you're like, this is not working. I'm not abusing my pills. I need it. You know, I'm taking what he told me to take uh, to get rid of my pain. So I'm going to go to one of these sites where I can get my Vicodin, and I'm going to do what I was prescribed before. I'm not going to take any more. I'm not going to take any less. Okay, that's fine. Well, the person that's running your prescription-free drugstore also knows how to shop on the dark web. So they go and buy some synthetic powdered fentanyl. And they get a pill press, right? Pharmacy quality that they can press out pills that look like Vicodin. Start doing that. Boom, hammer it out. The margin on Vicodin is very low, right? It's very expensive. So this guy, he's not worried about, he wants profit, right? He's a businessman. So not worried about your pain, he's just worried about his profit. So that's what he does. You buy Vicodin from him or her. You get it in, right? You get it back. You look at your pills like, man, that looks just like what the doctor gave me. Boom. I'm saving money, but I still have my prescription. Well, what's the problem with that? Fentanyl is 14 times stronger than Vicodin. So now instead of taking four of your Vicodin, you've now taken 56. And that's going to be the age-old story, right? Rock star, hotel room, dead in the bed. So that's an example of why you might not want to do that. So you may ask, is what we're doing here illegal? Am I breaking the law by surfing on the dark web? The answer is no, because remember, what did the dark web start out as? It was a tool, right, for anonymity. That's what the technology is. It's just been abused, right? If I take a hammer, I can build a beautiful house, or I can take that same hammer and destroy a priceless piece of art. So it's how I use that tool. These guys are using it for bad. Um, you say, well, okay, well, what good use is there? Well, let's say you're in a country where the internet's not as free as, and open as it is here in the United States. You know, political dissident, whatever reason, whatever it might be, uh, you need a way to communicate outside of that country. Well, this would be a way to do that, right? You can stay in contact with your family, with you know, whatever it might be. But that would be a legitimate reason to use the tool that the dark web uses. Um, legitimate marketplaces are starting to pop up. Uh, also, re you know, real retailers to, using this dark web technology because they think, hey, you know, our customers want to be anonymous for whatever reason. So again, right, capitalism, we're going to try to do that. We're going to give them a marketplace. But those are legitimate. Um, you know, here's one right here that we may all recognize right? It's Facebook. But this is using the technology, this dot onion at the end that shows you that it's using that technology to be anonymous on the internet, this dark, that the dark web uses. Now you also notice, right, it pops up. Um, people want to be anonymous, but 
Facebook wants to get some more stuff. You have to allow some. That's what this is asking me. Hey, we want to use your stuff. That makes it be less anonymous. But on the face, right, Facebook's trying to use that to give people the ability to, uh, to use this technology and be anonymous as they're surfing on the Internet if they want to be. So, you know, not everyone on the dark web is a criminal, but I can guarantee you most criminals are using the dark web. So I hope that this is uh, giving you a little bit of an insight to what it is, what can and can't be done, and why it may or may not be a good thing. Thank you very much.